Should have done something on second. Third and nine. First down, the game's over. Hurts with a shotgun. Game rolls the running back. There's a lot of time left in this game. Third and nine. Hurts back to pass. He's going to throw. He's going to throw, and he does. Intercepted. I just can't believe what I just saw. I really just can't believe what I just saw. I, I just can't believe what I just saw. How did he, I, I just can't believe, I'm, I'm stunned. I'm literally stunned. Of all the things you can't do is turn the ball over. I, wow, hurts, that, that, that really is bad, hurts. The thing is, he threw it. <coughs> he throws it. No, nobody's open. You gotta just step up there. What is he doing? I don't know why he would throw that. Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hubba Ray's having a great Tuesday. Definitely better than it was last week. Micah Parsons, not on Monday because we had the game, is out, of course, tonight, of course, doing his podcast. And I just got a little excerpt of it where he's calling out the talking heads and stuff on there. I have to be honest. I'm not crazy about Micah Parsons having the show, you know, and, and, and let let other people do the talking for you, okay? You know, you don't need to be the one that's out there calling everybody out and everything. Let, you know, just just do your job out on the field and let us go ahead and be the ones to name you. Let us call them out and things, okay? Because I need you focused on football. Now, don't get me wrong. Micah Parsons is playing lights out. He really is. He had that game-saving sack yesterday that really was a difference maker. I don't have a problem with what he plays, but sometimes we as Cowboys, we do too much talking, and that just ends up bringing out the best games of other people out there. So let's go to Micah Parsons and, and listen in to what he had to say. McCaffrey, they were missing Debo Samuel. Oop. This will piss me off about that, okay? Hold on. Same energy for everybody, because there's a whole bunch of bashing when it's Dak Prescott, but not the same when it's the Eagles. I got time to do, okay? A lot of people said the Browns' defense was overhyped. Everyone said, Micah don't know ball. I said, the Browns are the real deal. If they could put it together, they could be a hard team to beat. And now I can say it, we miss my guy, who we miss very much, Amar Cooper, balled the hell out. Like, he could have been the dog of the week. What he did to help lead his team over the 49ers was amazing. That catch was spectacular. Um, the Browns, and, and I heard a quote. Acho said this, which, which pissed me off. He said, I'm not worried about the 49ers, they were missing Christian McCaffrey. They were missing Debo Samuel. Mm -hmm. This will piss me off about that, okay? They started that game. The Browns were missing Deshaun Watson. They were missing Nick Chubb. They were missing Jack Collin. They were missing them key factors before the game even started. So why is it that we are just scrubs and we're nobodies that don't deserve to be on the field and we're just all talk, but there's a Hundred excuses for these other these other teams. Like if y'all just wanna hate Cowboys Nation, just say y'all hate Cowboys Nation. But don't sit here and throw shade on us. Keep the same energy for everybody. That's all it is. The Browns is a good team. They are gonna continue to progressing and being a great team. I don't I don't know if we have the stat line, but bring it up. I think they gave up over a, th a thousand their third best in the uh six game span. It's like a thousand some yards. I saw that statistic. Like that's amazing defense. This Browns defense is the real deal. I said they can put it together. They have all the pieces. They have Miles Garrett. Um, I mean, Denzel Ward. I mean, they still have Grant Delpit. Mark Emerson. Like, I'm going to just keep going about this Browns defense that I see that a lot of people are stepping on. If their offense could get it together, they're going to be a playoff team, which I said before, week one. Everything mm -hmm. I stated, I told you, I'm never going to get on this podcast and say, Unlike these other analysts who don't want to do their job. Oh, Shady McCoy. Uh, players trash or they're bad at football, which Ooh. isn't true. If you're in the NFL, Mike you're a good football player. 
I'm never going to get on this and say you're bad at football. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's just put like these edits are too lazy to do their job and actually look at football and look at lineups. But I will. And we're going to go through the breakdowns and do the real talking. Everything that caused since week one have have not failed and has been true. And we're just I just calling out the I just want the same energy for everybody because people I feel like those analysts are failing. Okay. So I can't say that I dispute a single word of what he just said. I can't. I honestly can't because I have said the same thing a million times. I have said this a million times. When we beat the Jets, it was like, oh, it's just the Jets. Man, they ain't got Aaron Rodgers. It's not a big deal. And they go out, they beat Buffalo. They turn around, they beat the Jets. I mean, excuse me, they beat the Eagles. Now we hear, oh, well, they got a great defense. But when the Cowboys play him and blew him out, it was like, eh, no big deal. You know, and it's the same thing with the, the Chargers right now. You know, now it's revisionist history. Before, it was like, Chargers are a good team. Great front seven. Well, their defense is trash. Okay, here we go. You know, um, like you said, with San Francisco, when um, – Trent Williams got hurt. Oh, man, their left tackle got hurt. Or the Eagles. You know, Lane Johnson is out. Man, he got hurt. So that was the built-in excuse. But when we lost to the Cardinals and we had three, three offensive linemen out, Zach Martin, Zach Martin, Tyron Smith. And how many times over the years have we missed Tyron Smith in games? And we never hear, well, you know, Dak had problems because, you know, uh, he didn't have an offensive line. We didn't hear that last night that Dak Prescott was the leading receiver on the Cowboys, right? Because we couldn't run the ball with anybody else other than Dak. He got 40 of the yards. We were under 100 yards rushing. The offensive line was not good. The play calling was atrocious. But if Dak had thrown an interception, they'd be pointing saying, Dak Prescott, that's the only thing. You know, it was almost comical because I was in the car with my wife going and running errands and things, right? And Colin Cowherd came on. And his uh, thing about the Cowboys game last night, you know, they went through. They, you know, had Dak Prescott interview and things. And he literally only spoke about the Cowboy game for about a minute and a half. Oh, the Cowboys, they're a decent team. You know, they'll take care of the lesser teams and stuff like that. But when it comes to playoffs, of course, you know, they're the Cowboys. He couldn't say anything decent about the Cowboys. Couldn't say they were on the road against a team that was coming off a bye week. You know, that they were injured and beat up. You know, lost Leighton Van Der Esch. Of course, Diggs has been out of there. That we got all kinds of injuries left and right and stuff. But if we had lost, you can guarantee you, they would have been right up in there. And it's funny because I ain't heard anything about anybody saying how, you know, Justin Herbert, everybody was saying was a top five quarterback. Hmm. He got beat out by one Dak Prescott for the second time. All right. Again, Micah, he ain't lying. But I'd rather have other people do the talking for you. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, I appreciate y'all. Peace.